What's up, YouTube? Your boy back once again with another sport topic, and today we're gonna talk some basketball, Orlando Magic basketball. Today we're gonna talk about free agency and how this affects the Orlando Magic. It's the first time in a long time that the Orlando Magic has something to look forward to via the off season. And the last time was what, 2012 when we were up in there about the White House or what we're gonna do, and. It, and that was actually negative because we were losing to White Howard and seeing what the Pelicans received for Anthony Davis, that trade just looks so horrible right now. Like, I mean, we already knew it was bad, but after seeing what the Pelicans received, it's even worse. And and also seeing what the Pelicans were able to do that offseason, I mean, do this this offseason during the draft, <laughs> it looks even worse. Like, the the Magic should have been able to do a lot of stuff in 2012, but they didn't. They, they botched that completely. So... It is what it is. Plus, one of the reasons why we're in the situation that we're in right now. So, but this year, we got something to look forward to positively. It's the first time in a long time, like I said. We have two restricted free agents, unrestricted free agents, and uh, Vooch, who should have, um, Vooch, who was um, an all star, coming off his first all star appearance, and um, Terrence Ross, who should have been higher up, in, uh, should have been higher up in the six man year. That was just crazy. He ain't getting that one first place vote. And he's, a, he's the only player in NBA history to hit over 200 threes and not start a single game. That's just crazy. Him not getting out one single vote, him, him only being fifth. But it is what it is. But we, both of those players, I definitely believe, are coveted. I think people definitely want to sign both of those players. Now, in seeing what has happened the past 24 hours, what has transpired, this video right here, more than likely, is going to piss off half of y'all. And to be honest, it is what it is because I'm not about to just sugarcoat nothing. I'm gonna be for real. I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be for real. I'm gonna give you my honest opinion. I'm gonna just be real with. You. I'm not about to just sell you no wolf tickets and everything ain't just sunshine and rainbows. Like I'm gonna give you the facts. I'm gonna tell you exactly what it is. And hey, if you this ain't the channel for you, if you just want somebody to validate how you feel, I'm just giving you honest opinion. You take that what you will. Now, in saying that. After seeing what has transpired, this is probably the most I've ever seen a fan base divided in a long time. Out of all the teams that I've ever covered, this is probably this off, off of one decision. This is the most I've probably seen the fan base be divided. Because I, I can't remember how divided we were or the Magic were when uh, about the whole the White Howard thing. But and and that's and that's this Nikola Vucevic being offered four years reportedly that he's been offered four years 90 million which gives you roughly around 22 million per depends exactly how the language has. we have to see he, he will have to sign the contract and we will have to see exactly how it's broken down within the four years if it's front loaded if it's back loaded if it's all in the middle exactly how the contract language is spit but on face value four years 90 million for uh it's 22 million per and to be honest my honest opinion it's not a good contract it's not a good decision. Um, hopefully, <laughs> I right, put it like this: This is not something I will offer him. I've been on record plenty of times on plenty of my videos of uh, not signing Vooch. I, I've, I've been I've been said that, especially especially my playoff games breakdown when I was breaking down all those playoff games because th that's one of my main reasons. If you watch the playoffs, was you really sitting back watching the playoffs like hmm? Number nine is cold, man. Like, number nine is raw, man. He, he's an all-star. Like, yeah, he was an all-star. He's an all-star at the center. And to be honest, he should have been an all-star because looking at the previous all-stars going back in the East for the past four years, they ain't had centers. They've been taking forwards and playing forwards, play, playing power forwards at centers because they ain't had no centers. So he should have easily been able to be an all-star years ago. Why is it taking him just now to get to the age of 29? And you're going to give him, you're going to pay him $90 million? At age of 29, he's only averaging 20 and 12. Now, I mean, now, now 20 and 12 is not nothing to sneeze at. Like I say, it's not nothing to sneeze at. But he's 29. Ain't like he's 23, 24. Like, I know people have been throwing that in the face. Oh, when we pay Gordon, it's inconsistent if we don't pay, if we don't pay Vooch. Gordon's 24 years old. Like, Gordon has a lot of time to grow. Like, to be honest, Gordon's still a baby. <laughs> like, he came to the league at 19. Like, he's still, he still a baby. And part of the reason why we haven't seen the best out of Aaron Gordon is because of the way the offense is ran, especially this past year, because of Nikola. Because if you notice the games when Nikola was not playing, 
Gordon, those were Gordon's best games. Oh, the games, like the season opener, when we ran the ball through Gordon. What was it, 26 and 16? The season finale, when when uh, Vooch didn't play. 27 and 15? Like, Gordon can't play in the playoffs. He had tw he's the only player who scored uh, scored over twenty more than once. Yeah, I know he had twenty point. Uh, he had a twenty two point game and a twenty five point game. Nikola scored in the playoffs. Only scored twenty one time. He scored twenty two, I think, in game three. Other than that, he had multiple games that he only scored six points. He went from in the regular season, averaging twenty uh, averaging twenty point eight off of fifty one percent shooting. To in the postseason, averaging 11 off a 27% shooting. And that's worth 90 million. And don't give me the whole he was getting being guarded by Marcus All. I don't care. I don't care. Okay, Marcus All is a good defender. Yeah, he is. Who a better defender, Marcus All or Giannis? Who's a better defender, Marcus All or Embiid? Those are the guys that Nicola will be facing in the playoffs in the East. And if he's your main option, I mean, don't get me wrong, but if he's, I, I, I don't get me wrong, Will Bamba fair against him, I understand that, I get that. But in saying that, Bamba wouldn't be the main option. When your main option is your center and he can get taken away like that, what does happen? What happens? What happens? Not to mention, you drafted Bamba last year at number six overall. What was the purpose of drafting Bamba if you, if you just go and just continue to have a new, uh, new Nikola uh, a start. Everybody coming into the season, the plan was to trade Nikola. It, we that's pretty much what everybody thought was going to happen. Nikola was going to get traded. I think that's the reason why they ran the ball through him the way they did, just to boost up his numbers so he, he increased his trade value. Um, and I just think they just the, the, the magic was just start rolling. You just didn't want to fuck it up, so that's the reason why they didn't trade. And probably it wasn't a trade that they liked. And they just kept rolling, not to mention Bomba gets hurt. So then you were stuck that you needed uh, Nicola because you needed, you, needed, you needed a center. But everybody pretty much thought that was the case coming into the season. So my thing is I'd much rather go after guard play because that's pretty much what we need, especially with the news of, um, uh, of Markel Fultz not knowing if he's going to play. Like, he ain't just, uh, him ain't just say it just to be saying. Not a lot of people. Oh man, we 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 uh we guarding them, man. We we we, we keeping them under wraps. We not the team that drafted Markel Foles number one. Markel Foles is not Zion Williams. Markel Foles is not. Everybody's not clamoring. Oh, when Markel gonna play? When Markel gonna play? From a national media. Now, from Magic fans, from Magic Nation, yeah, we want to know when he's gonna play. But from everybody else in the NBA, they can care less. They forgot all about that Markel Foles is even in the NBA right now. So, you're not hiding Markel Foles from nobody. You're not hiding and protecting him from nobody. Ain't nobody worried about what Markel Foles is playing outside of Orlando. So, there's no reason to be like, oh, we, 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 we don't know what Markel Foles is going to play, but he's secretly going to play week one. Like, this is the thing about the whole Markel Foles trade. The Orlando Magic were able to, they, it was a low risk, high reward because we didn't draft Mar we didn't draft market folks. We didn't spend high draft capital on market folks. We gave up um, Jonathan Simmons, who barely played, and then some picks that we got from the Thunder, which are going to be high picks because of Paul George and uh, and, and Westbrook. I, I think the Thunder going to be a top four seed in the West next year. So the, more than likely, like th those picks are not going to be useful to us. So we basically. And if market folks becomes un becomes worthy of the number one, uh, number one overall pick. We hit out the park. Well, it's like it's a high reward, low risk, high reward. But the only time, like nothing that Markel Foles does affects you in a negative light. If Markel Foles is worth the number one overall pick, you you barely pay anything for him, so you good. If he's an all star, just a just all occasional all star, you good. If he's a solid starter, you good. If he's a bust and never plays the NBA, and never plays a second on the NBA court ever again, okay. You didn't really give up much. You didn't really pay much to get them, so it doesn't really affect you in a negative light. The only way it affects you is if you depend on him and he doesn't deliver. And what I mean by that is that you have opportunity to sign somebody. Hey, D'Angelo Russell, want to come to? Hey, man, I want to come to the Magic, man. Hey, nah, D'Lo, we good. We got Markel. Hey, Markel, you ready to play? Nah, cause I'm I'm, st I'm still rehabbing. 
All right, all right, we good. Kimber, hey, Kimber Walker, hey, no, we good. We got Markel Fox, man. We good, Kimber. Yeah, Markel going. No, I'm still, still rehabbing. All right. Draft paper him out. No, we we don't need to draft no point guard. We got we got Markel. We got Markel. We good. You know, we got Markel Fox. Number one overall pick, 2017. Hey, Markel, you ready? Uh, that's when he affects you in a negative light. When you pass up opportunities to get guard play because you're depending on him, and he never delivers. He never plays. Or when he does play, he's not good. That's when he affects you negatively. My mindset, I will operate like Markel folks. It's not on the team. You back there. Because wherever you get out of Markel will be a plus. I'm targeting this free agency, and I'm targeting my offseason like I don't have a Markel folks. Just in case Markel never recovers. That way it doesn't hurt you. Anyway. And hey, and if Markel comes back, like I said, you could throw Markel at the two. You got trade. If 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 things work out, you got other ways to get rid you got other ways to do other things. So you're not just hindering yourself. That's part of the reason why I would have drafted Nikhil Alexander. Like I said, people want to talk about, oh, you flip flop. No. I'm okay with Chella. I mean uh Chuma, but I still would take Nikila, especially what's going on with Markel Fultz. That's the reason why I would have taken him, even though he's a shooting guard, but he can play some point guard. Now, the Orlando Magic via frequency have, I think our cast space is right at 17 and some change. They actually can't easily open up, um, get get open up to 25 million if they uh, renounce. Who is it that they can renounce? They will open up their cast space. Yeah, if they renounce uh, Jameer Grant and Jamel Martin, if they if they because they're both uh, um, restricted phrases, if they renounce both of them, renounce both their rights, that would clear up uh, a little over seven million. Like uh, those two combined will clear up a little bit over seven million, that, and that'll get you up to twenty five million. And I seen a trade proposal on one of the board on one of the message boards. I mean, uh, completely, it's a completely unlikely trade. I, I get that, but. It interests me some. It was um, the seeing Mozgov, and uh, it, it was like uh, they, they, the trade that I seen had Mozgov, Fournier, a first round pick, a second round pick to Washington for Bradley Beal. Reason why that's because actually it actually clears up cash space for us, and you send you send both of those contracts. I think it's thirty three million, um, um, which um, Bradley Beal's come back at twenty seven million, and if you do that, that opens up six million dollars of cap space. So if you combine that six million, if they renounce those two contracts, you add that six million on top of that, that gets you thirty-one million. Now, now I know that trade will be unlikely. You would probably you would have to add more than one. You like one, you would need to add some more first round picks. And to be honest, if they as long as they protect the first round picks, I'm cool. Like if they like top three protected, top five protected, I'm cool. They ain't gotta be just straight lottery protected. Like if they if they just top five, top three protected. I'm cool with those draft picks. I'm, I'm cool. You can send dra multiple draft picks if they top five protected. I'm cool to because you gotta start taking chances because right now with the injury to Kevin Durant, with the injury to Klay Thompson, the NBA is wide open and for the whole NBA. But we gonna take that. We are just gonna take it. We gonna take it at face value. We are gonna talk about the East. That Kawhi Leonard is considering both the Lakers and the Clippers. And I can't stand the Lakers, so I hope he don't go to the Lakers. But as a Magic fan, I just want him to get out the West. Because if he leaves the West, there's only two clear-cut teams in the East that, that you can clearly say they're the number one and number two team in the East. And that's uh, Milwaukee and the 76ers. Everybody else is going to be up for grabs. I don't care if Kyrie goes to Brooklyn. I don't care that, that right now it's probably the Kemba's look like, like I just seen the, uh, a report from Yahoo that, that Kemba's going to sign a, a four-year, $41 million deal with the Celtics. That doesn't make the Celtics. I mean, it make it does make the Celtics good. I'm not saying, but it doesn't make them clear cut a top team. It doesn't make them clear cut the third, the fourth best team in the East. It doesn't make them clear cut. Everybody's basically up for grabs. See, three, four, five, six, seven, eight are all gonna be up for grabs. The only two top seeds is gonna be the uh, Milwaukee. It's gonna be Philly. Them the only two number one clear cut. Uh, they going because Milwaukee has Giannis, the reigning MVP. 
the 76ers, even if they lose Jimmy Butler, they still have Joel. And, and, and that's even Joel and B plays. They have Joel and B, and they have Ben Simmons. They have two all. They they actually have talent. If they as long as they can keep the box here, those are the only two teams that you can clearly say. And who knows if they lose both Butler and Tobias Harris, then you can kind of maybe say something about Philly as well because in B's injury history. In saying that, the East is wide open. It is time for you to make moves. Now I know that Brooklyn uh put a, a off a qualifier on um on D'Lo, so they can match. I mean, he's a really restricted phrase to announce. I mean, they can match, but. Of course, if they're able to sign Kyrie, they're not going to sign him. Now, you got to have to open up your cap space to, to bring in somebody like D'Lo. And the Lakers are saying that they want, they want D'Lo, but they don't want to pay D'Lo the max. I think his max is 27. So, they're they, they trying to get him for like 22, maybe 23. So, yeah, of course, the Magic, like we've said before, the Magic going to have to do some finagling. The Magic going to do some finagling to get, up, to get under the cap, like the, to, um... Even if they renounce those contracts, they're going to have to find a way to move Moscow. Um, I don't know exactly how you're going to do it. More than likely, if you move him, you're going to have to send picks with it to, to, um, to open up that cat space. So exa that's exactly what you're going to do. You're going to have to find a way to uh, send picks open up the cat space. Names have been thrown out there, like Terry Rozier. Um, I'm kind of like, Terry Rozier, I, I'm interested because I think Terry Rozier um, needed more time to play in Boston. And could Terry Rozier be like a Trace McGrady type James Harden? And when I mean, I'm not saying he's those Cowboy players. What I'm saying is a guy who was on the bench on his previous team. Like Trace McGrady was on the bench in Toronto. James Harden, even though he was sixth man of the year, was on the bench in, in OKC. Went to a team and became the guy. Because Trace McGrady's on record saying that he didn't even think that he was, he didn't know he was that type of scorer that he was. He said that he thought he was going to come there with Grant Hill and he was going to be Basically, um, Sky Pippen, he, he was going to be Sky Pippen to Grant Hill's Michael Jordan when he came to Orlando. That was his mindset. So, in saying that, he, but when Grant Hill goes down and it was all on his shoulders to become the type of scorer he was and become a two-time um, scoring champ with the Magic, could Terry Rozier, I'm not saying that Terry Rozier is going to be a two-time scoring champ, but could Terry Rozier go from being a 3 and D guy, a guy who plays good defense, who can hit occasional threes, to be if he's the guy, if he's the point guard, we he, he's been saying to say he that he believes he's the best point guard in the NBA. Hey, confidence is half the battle. If he comes, if you're able to get him on a good deal, could he be able to elevate his game to be an all star type point guard? Who knows? But he's also the type of guy that you can give a contract to that you'd be like four years, three years, two years into the contract. That was a bad contract. So it's it's buyer beware with that one. Like I'm. I'm interested. I'm, I'm intrigued by. It. Depends on how the money works. Now, if you were, now if you able to find a way, like I said, to, to get that to get the Bradley Beal deal done, and then bring in somebody like Terry Rozier, then you got your point. You, you got your two guards. You got your shooting guard, and you got your point guard. I'm definitely cool with that. But I know that's pretty much pie in the sky. I know that's pretty much highly unlikely because of. Washington's more likely relentment to give him up. But hey, if you got to give up first round picks to do it, like I said, as long as they're unprotected, I mean, as long as they protected, like, like top five protected, something like that, I'm good with that. Because you got to find a way to elevate yourself to be a top five team in the East. I mean, a top four team in the East. And it's right there for the taking. And I'm sorry, sign Nicola is not that because I don't see Nicola, I don't see Nicola as that guy. Like, Watching when I watch in the playoffs, I don't see him as that guy. You know, don't don't be judging nobody off a playoff series. That's how you're supposed to judge. You're supposed to. That's how you you don't judge people off a of regular season. Oh, anybody can ball on a Wednesday in the middle of a middle, a middle, a Wednesday in the middle of October. Anybody can do that when the pressure is on. When it's time to win championships. When championships is on the line, your season is on the line. You on the road playing against the same opponent. Every two days, when they study film, can you elevate your game? Because if you cannot, you can never win a championship. If you can't elevate your game in, in, the, in the first round of the playoffs, how are you going to elevate your game in the finals? And if you don't believe you can elevate, if you don't believe that uh, you can elevate your game to the finals, why do you want this play on your team? If you, especially him being your star, now if he's your second guy, now I believe that Nicole can go to the Lakers 
or go to the Rockets, go to the Celtics, go to um, Portland, Oklahoma City, other playoff caliber teams, other teams that are in the playoffs, and him not be the number one guy, teams that got a LeBron and Anthony Davis, a James Harden, Chris Paul, uh, uh, CJ McCullough, and Dame Lillard. You know what I'm saying? Like, even with Kimball Walker and, 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 and Jason Tame in Boston. Like, they have a number one score, and he's out there. He's a, he's a big man. He's not the main option. That's cool. But if you sign the Cola, the most important thing is that Isaac and Gordon and, and most importantly, Markel Foltz become the guys. Because as Nicola being your number one guy, it's not going to work. You're not, it's not going to work because he's not a dominant big man. He's not Shaq. He's not Dwight Howard. He's not a dominant big man that's going to get you to the NBA Finals or win you a championship, let alone win you a championship. I don't think he can get you to the Conference Finals if it's him being your best player. So if you sign him, what you're basically saying is that you have completely faith in Isaac, Gordon, and Markel Fultz, most importantly. And that could be very detrimental. That could be extremely detrimental, especially the Markel Fultz factors, not, not knowing about the injury, not knowing if he's going to come back from the injury. Because that's what you're saying with that type of move. If you, if you, when you give him this type of money in this type of year, now it, a two-year deal, yeah. But a four-year deal, four- or five-year deal, you're saying that these other guys are going to have to step up because – if Nicola is your, or, or you just don't know basketball because if Nicola is your number one guy, you're not going to win. You're not. This this league is, is, is by guards. It's not big men anymore. And then also, if it was by big men, Nicola's game is not a dominant big game. It, like I said, he's not Shaq. He's not Dwight. He's not um, um, Akeem Olajuwon. He's not those ilks of big men that dominated games and won playoff series for their for they teams. He's not. He's not big. He's not a big dominant guy. It's not. Just because he. Just because he averaged twenty points, are we supposed to just fall to the floor and be like, "Oh man, he's an all star." Hey, we got no, no. Fuck an all star game. I, I can care less about. That's a meaningless game. He, he didn't even do nothing. He didn't even do nothing in the all star game. He was trash in the all star game. You want me? If you watch the all star game, he didn't. He was looked unathletic in a game that they don't even play defense in. Like he wasn't even doing the All Star game, let alone the game that mattered the most, the playoffs against Toronto. He was non-existent. Like, share, subscribe if you haven't. Comment below if you haven't. Click that bell. Get more videos. I holler.